guys, Mixed Media Girl here. Welcome to Paint Night. And this is a uh, do it from your home, relaxed, hang out with your family, no stress kind of paint night, okay? <laughs> um, today we're doing this awesome spring painting one. I friggin love this one. One of my favorites. I love how colorful it is. It's all rainbow-ish and whatnot. Hey, Veronica. So as you tune in, please do not forget to thumbs up and also let me know in the comment box if you, in the chat, if you are painting along so that I kind of can gauge how fast and how slow to go and I know who all is here. So just going to go over the materials we're using today. Um, this painting is also extra cool because you can use all the colors in the world. Um, I also taught a class once and a girl did it in mostly black and white with like one color. I think she used either purple or red, I can't remember. And that came out really cool too. So there's no right or wrong way to do it. Just use what you have. I am using um, Craft Smart Paint. This is the cheap acrylic paint from Michaels. Basically the same as like, oh, <laughs> my cats just ran into my tripod because they were wrestling. <laughs> Um, basically the same as like apple barrel. <laughs> Sorry about that guys. <laughs> Come on kids, settle down. I'm trying to paint here. All right. And then in terms of brushes, hey Heather, same as usual. I'm using a foam brush. Uh, this is a one inch foam brush. A medium flat brush this one's I think a half inch and then just a little detail brush all right okay so who all is painting along with me let me know down in the chat box please seems like the cats have stopped wrestling for a minute so that's good okay good Rika, Heather Jazzy are you painting today All right, let's get started. I'll take a sip of my coffee. So this background is super easy. It's basically just really colorful rainbow. So go ahead and start with your foam brush or whatever brush you're using. Hey, Hannah. A key thing on the background is to use a lot of white. So I feel like people often don't think with using white but white really helps to blend the colors and um, will also just help make it pop. So I like to uh, kind of, on my brush, I'll usually do cool colors on one side and warm colors with the other side. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with some warm colors. So some white and some orange. And all you're doing is you're gonna just kind of stripe them. Oh, I meant to actually use yellow there. So you're basically gonna just to pick up colors and move across your canvas. Now keep in mind what colors will blend together to make secondary colors, but of course you can use those secondary colors as well. But even if you just have the primary colors, you know that red and yellow make orange. You know that red and white make pink, right? So use that to your advantage. Use a lot of white as you go. Um, so like I don't really recommend mixing like say purple and orange or purple and yellow. Those may not mix too well together, but you can mix the purple with the red. That works fine. And don't stress too much about it. Even if you end up with a little bit of mud, it's okay. We're not going for like a rainbow. So you want to go back and forth a bit. So maybe over here, I'm going to try throwing in a little bit of blue which blue with yellow will make green. With the orange, it'll make a little bit of a muddy color, but as long as you don't go over it too much, as long as you just keep um, sh like striping it, you'll be fine. So I'm gonna just go ahead and continue this. Make sure you get the bottom too, <laughs> um, until I've got my canvas covered. And of course, go heavier or lighter on any colors as you 
Oh, so choose. It's gonna be a little hard to get the bottom covered here. Okay. All right, Tina said she's baking a cake, but she's listening, <laughs> that's fine. Okay, good, Jazzy's painting. Hey, Carolyn, welcome. <laughs> yeah, for this, just have fun with it and just remember to use lots and lots of white and you can make it as rainbow or whatever as you want. Totally up to you. Also keep in mind that a flower is going to cover a very large portion of this. So. Right, I'm gonna go back in here with some more yellow. Give me a nice green. Always, always keep going with the white. Also, I should have definitely said this earlier, but keep in mind, um, you don't want to put too much paint on the background because we will need it to be relatively dry when we go on to the next steps. So try to keep it fairly light. Okay, what other colors should I have over here? Some more purple. You know what I don't have in here is pink. Let's see if I can get some pink. My brush is a bit muddy at this stage. Okay, there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'm going to leave it as is. I think I have a lot more white on that one, but that's okay. <laughs> Tina says, yes, I need pink. <laughs> All right. Hey, Halevi. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Natasha. Welcome, welcome. Netherlands. Becky. Totally understand. Too tired of paint. You know, like 90% of the time I think I feel like canceling my paint nights. I'm always like, oh, I'm just too tired. But then once I get started, I have so much fun. All right. So those painting along, let me know in the chat box um, when you're done with your background or where you're at on that. You can say need more time or done because the longer you guys take, the more I go and work on mine. So, <laughs> and at this stage, you shouldn't need the foam brush anymore. Okay. Hey, Daniel. Yeah, if you have a heat, then also you can use that to dry your background faster. Now this painting looks really simple, but people often have actually a really hard time with the petals. So I think I now know how to um, teach it so that that's a bit easier. <laughs> it looks hard. <laughs> Hopefully most of you are done with your background. If so, this is where you kind of decide what part is your favorite and whatever part's your favorite, you want that to be on the left side because that's going to show the most. So you can flip it around and be like, hmm, I like that better. Like, I actually think I like this better over here. This is a really nice, I really like this more than this got a little bit muddy. So I think I'm going to actually have it in this direction. gonna bother me so I'm gonna go over it real quick. I know 
mouth this one there we go okay <laughs> all right okay so now in terms of our flower the first thing we're going to do going on to your medium flat brush is we're just going to add this circle now you want that to be off centered unless you want to center it that's totally fine and honestly you could go you could do it on either side there's no rules but generally speaking you want it off center so a little bit higher than the center and a little bit to the right of the center and i'm just going to use yellow so about right here and just go ahead and add a circle where you think that center is going to be and don't worry we can go over this again this is just a guideline okay so you might have some wet paint behind that that makes that circle not very great that's okay we'll come back to it but go ahead and put your, your circle in there and then let me know in the chat box once that is done okay hey Kathleen good night Elizabeth and then we'll go on to the next step show you my tips and tricks for getting these petals right but let me know down in the chat box where you're at. Okay, kids. No wrestling in here. You want to wrestle in the living room? Okay. Aw, oh, thanks, Yvette. Okay, Heather's ready. You guys want to say hi? Come on. Okay, this is time for the kitten to say hi. Yo, kitten got a collar. The cat got a collar too, but I'm scared to put him, I'm scared to put the collar on him. I think he's just gonna get mad. Okay, go play somewhere else. Okay, good, so you guys are ready? Excellent, so I'm gonna show you real quick the wrong way to do it. I found this to be successful at least more successful, showing people how to not do it first. So you've got your, I'm just gonna use a piece of paper here. I was all prepared. You got your circle, okay? Now what people get confused on is um, the petals that are behind. So I'm gonna show you how people often do it. They'll go with their petals like this. And then instead of adding one that would logically fit behind, they try to put a whole new petal like this. Okay, that is how not to do it. And you also tr want to try to have the petals be kind of the same size and shape. Although it can look fun to be all abstract like that, but this is a definite no-no. <laughs> Unless that's what you're going for. Stephanie, all my live videos get posted as regular videos afterwards unless it's something time sensitive. So you will definitely be able to watch and follow along later at your own pace, no problems. And then just as another reminder for anyone tuning in, um, also you can quickly catch up if you want to. We just did the background, we haven't started the flower yet. But also anyone that's tuning in, please do not forget to thumbs up. And also um, if you enjoy this tutorial, please, 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 Super Chat or Super Sticker or PayPal donate if you can. I know times are kind of rough, but even a couple bucks helps. It goes a long way and that makes it so it's easier for me to keep doing these. Okay, so when we do our flower, what we're going to do, because this is acrylic paint, it can go over itself. We're going to start with our uh, petals just the the ones that would be say the front ones and then when we go to do our back petals we're going to pretend like those aren't even there and we're just going to put a new set of petals in between you see that then we'll use our fancy acrylic paint to cover up the parts that shouldn't be showing okay so that's how we're doing the petals 
I hope you guys understood that because no one's letting me know in the chat box. <laughs> so I'm going to just assume you got it. All right. So still using the medium flat brush. And you can rinse it off at this point if you want, but you don't have to. I'm going to go in with some white and we're going to start to make the outlines of our main petals. So this is going to be just the one layer. Don't try to do any of the back ones right now. And the key is to try to make them sort of the same size and shape. Okay. And we will be able to adjust these as we go. So like this one's a little smaller than that one. I can make it a little bit bigger if I want to. Obviously the ones on the right hand side are going to go off the canvas and some on the top are probably as well. That's okay. You're basically just making a bunch of almond shapes. Take your time. Okay, so there's kind of the first layer, okay? Thanks, Becky. Veronica, you got this. You totally got this. Yeah, this one's a little small. Okay, so just the first layer, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys some time to get that down. Take your time and let me know when you are there, okay? Take this opportunity to have a sip of coffee. Did everyone have a good Mother's Day? I forgot to ask. Mine was pretty good. And I'm sorry for everybody that texted me and messaged me Happy Mother's Day, like Tina, and I didn't reply. I honestly got a little overwhelmed. I woke up on Mother's Day morning to like 50 messages. And I was like, I don't have time to answer all of these. So I'm very, very sorry. But I did get the messages and I did really appreciate them. <laughs> sorry about that. Hey, James. Hey, Judy. <laughs> Veronica, that's what she said. But you can go ahead and adjust them. That's why we, we do this. You start small, you can make them bigger, okay? <laughs> ah, Heather's ready, okay, good. Yeah, even these, mine are a little bit smaller than that, that side. You can tell that there's a little more space here than there, but that's okay. We're gonna adjust as we go. Okay, so now onto the second layer. Remember what I showed you? We're going to basically pretend like those are not there. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add ones in between. So just overlap, pretend those lines aren't even there. And you're trying to make it the same size and shape as those, okay? Just go ahead and add one in between each one of those. And in some spaces, you may be able to add two. Like I actually have a decent amount of distance here. But I'm going to start with one because that's probably gonna be fine. It is hard when you have the ones going off the canvas. Another thing that people often do is they make this small, like they automatically just make it thinner to try to like kind of squeeze it in. Don't do that. Imagine that it's continuing and it needs to be the same size going off the canvas. I know that's kind of hard. All right, so just adding more almonds in here. And one more. So at this stage, like I said, if there's an area where it feels like maybe you should add one more, go ahead. Like right here, I kind of got a big space there. I'm going to throw in one more because why not it fits and then I think I'm going to add one more down over here because why not <laughs> all right oh thank you so much RSD teacher 2010 
You're awesome. Okay, bye, Tina. You have a kitten. Yep, this is the hot mess stage. But you can see that it's starting to come together, right? <laughs> no problem, Judy. No problem at all. Oh, goodness. Now, if the kitten pulls my whole table down, that's probably a problem. Get down, you turkey. Oh. Okay. Did you want to say hi again? There's some, some new people that tuned in. Say hi. Meow. <laughs> Oh, she's so cute. This is your weekly size check for everyone that doesn't get to see you all week. I know, she's getting so big. <laughs> okay, uh, so for everyone painting along, let me know in the chat box where you're at. Renee, you didn't miss it, but we are about halfway through, so I'm not sure if you want to try to catch up, or you can watch along later. You can watch it on replay. Totally up to you. Okay. So here's where we get to have fun with colors, but you have to kind of try to remember where your basic lines are, okay? Now that you have kind of that outline, that you just have to kind of think with that. So similar to the background where we just used random colors and a lot of white, that's what we're doing here. So I will start with a few. I'm just using my same flat brush. It still has white on it. I haven't washed it. And I'm gonna go in here with some blue and start filling this in. Because I already have actually yellow and white on here, it's giving me some really cool colors and maybe I'm going to go over here with some blue as well. Okay. Feel free to do multiple colors on one petal, but keep in mind the colors that go well together. So obviously blue and purple go well together and we don't want stripes. So you're going to go in there with white also. You do not have to go all the way up to the center. Just go basically in that vicinity. We're going to be working on the center again later, so you don't have to stress about it, okay? Um, I'm gonna do a few more with the blue just so you can kind of get to see how these work because when we get to the back petals, I'll show you what we do. All right, so let's say I'm gonna do I'm gonna just show you this section right here. So here I have blue and purple, okay? So now at this stage, these two are front petals. Fudge stickle, oh my God. <laughs> Hold on, I have to take the kitten into the other room because she is being a butt nugget. Hold on. Sierra. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so understandably, you probably won't remember which is front and back, and that's okay because it doesn't matter. So I'm going to show you how this works. So right now, these two are in the front. Doesn't matter if they were there originally, and it's not going to matter in a second if they're there later. <laughs> so I'm going to go in here with some red. Red goes well with blue and purple, and I'm going to go ahead on this petal which is now gonna become the front petal. And those two are now back petals. You see that, you guys? So this is a really easy way to help you maintain those shapes and not get too confused 
because it doesn't matter. You can pull them forward and back. So over here, maybe I go with some yellow on this back one, right? That now becomes the front. But now I have this one and this one. I can decide if I want those to be front or back and I can put them in the front now and put them back to the back later. It really doesn't matter, okay? So you're gonna go ahead and just start filling in all of your petals. Try to keep it like as beautifully random as possible. Do not forget to continue to use your white to blend your colors. Try not to end up with stripes or mud and just have fun with it. All right. So this one is now going to go in the front and that orange goes in the back and I can switch it around later if I want to, okay? Oh, thanks, Amy Art. Welcome, welcome to the crazy clan. I'm gonna go ahead and try to make this one kind of pink. Feel free to rinse your brush in between if you want. Totally up to you. All right. So, and also go at random so that you don't have it to where they're just like, you know, they're all overlapping. Go at random and that way it'll just switch it up a lot, okay? I hope my explanations are making sense. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm speaking gibberish. <laughs> this is hurting your brain. <laughs> I totally understand. <laughs> Natasha is going strong. Got it. Great. All right, going here with some yellow. I don't know why, but I like yellow and purple together and I like orange and blue together. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. Definitely feel free to rinse your brush as you go if you need to. Like you definitely don't have to muddy the colors. Okay. and feel free to move your petals as you go. So if you look right here, this one's a little bit too far to the right. So I'm gonna actually kind of bring it a little more this way. And that's okay because I can, I'm allowed. Sorry for hurting your brains, not on purpose. Coming along, coming along. I don't have any green, I just realized. So you can of course make green or you can just cheat and use green. Like I'm definitely using orange and purple, so <laughs> I don't know why I didn't pour green on my plate. Ah, I'll just mix them, I have enough paint here. Just do not forget your white, okay? I personally love to make these as streaky as possible. Once you have them all filled in, then you can 
bring them to the front or the back as you choose. So I'm gonna bring this blue one back to the front. I did warn you that this one is a bit tough. Y'all didn't believe me. You were like, oh, it looks easy. <laughs> I'd say the beach one that we did last week was easier than this one, I would say. Could be wrong, but to me, <laughs> that one seems easier. <laughs> We are going to go in there later with black accents, as you can see. So if some of them are kind of blended together with the next one next to it, don't stress too much, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Yeah, Amy, we've been doing these live uh, paint nights about once a week for the last couple months, like in quarantine. I'll show you the one we did last week was this beach one and these are all if you just go to my videos list you can find them and then let's see we had oh goodness we had this peacock one a bunch of different ones I've been kind of books every week as to which one we should do next. Yeah, maybe I should have warned you guys to get some extra sleep for this one. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to go in a little bit, make this a little more wild and crazy because right now it's a little too neat. So I'm using white and also just bright colors where things may have gotten muddy before. Purple. So I'll bring this one. Up. I like purple and blue. This one's definitely coming out, if you can kind of tell, a bit warmer actually than that one, surprisingly. Hey Mason, welcome. Thank you for watching my channel. Hope you enjoy it. All right, overall, I feel like I'm fairly happy with this. A few more little Getting more blue in there. <laughs> I was like, this is too warm. <laughs> hey, El Spicy. Yeah, it's 4.35 where I am. Oh man, it's 2.30 a.m., Nacha. I did a paint, I did a live video last night at like midnight here. So you would have been awake then. <laughs> 7.35 in Kentucky. Yeah, I know a lot of my viewers are um, either like, Central 
mountain or mountain time or east coast so this time is a little early for me but it works for most of you which is why i picked this time all right how are we looking let me know in the comments anyone that's painting along how you're doing if you need more time or if you think you got this i feel like i'm about done with mine i feel like i mean you can keep going for like a hundred years but at some point you just have to say, okay, I'm done. Yeah, this is all craft smart paint. Okay. All right, I'm gonna walk away. <laughs> gonna walk away. Okay, so Hannah needs a little time. Veronica needs a little time. No worries, take your time. And we'll just chat over here in the chat box. So Mason, you're in Florida, and Lindsay. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Spicy. <laughs> Oh, Saudi Arabia, welcome, welcome. Yeah, I've been wanting to do one of my like late, late night lives for a while, but I'm feeling kind of unmotivated <laughs> recently. Okay, so while you guys are catching up, um, I wanted to do a kind of a quick vote. Next week, I would like to do a vase. But I need to know um, if you guys that want to paint along would have access to both a vase and then also the paint I use for the vase is um not craft smart <laughs> it is enamel paint so i use folk art enamel generally it doesn't have to be folk art but this is specifically paint for glass and you can see because it has the wine glass on the top and it'll generally tell you um that it's for glass so I was thinking about this though, and I was like, well, if people don't have access to the enamel paint, you can probably paint it with regular paint and then just seal it with like the Rust-Oleum or something because you're not gonna be drinking from it. So anyways, let me know if you guys wanna give this one a go next week, if you think you can kind of scrounge up some materials to do it. You can, it doesn't have to be a clear vase. You can paint on top of any vase, really. So let me know. Oh, thank you, all Spicy. You're awesome. And this is actually super, super duper easy. You can also do it on wine glasses. You can't just watch Veronica. I feel like you're like legally bound to follow along. <laughs> it's actually super duper duper easy trust me like surprisingly I have not yet had a single person come out with a bad base well maybe like one out of like 200 I guess where there's a will there's a way some people um like to come to the paint nights already completely drunk <laughs> so at least they have fun Yeah, that's what the wine glass symbol on the top means. It means it's for glass. And you can see, let me see if I have some of my other bottles here. I don't think so. But some of them have like a, a house on it. And that's generally like that's the outdoor paint. And then some have a house and a glass and something else. And those are um, like they're can be used for anything kind of paint. So. 
Thank you, Mason. <laughs> okay, Veronica, Heather, um, and everybody else standing along. Where are you all at? Hannah? Oh yeah, you could substitute a bottle. Oh, that's a great idea too. If you have um, also jars, like if you have some old jars, you can do that and you can make it into a really cute candle or even that could be a vase, you know? Hey, Kelly. Hey, Dallas. <laughs> yeah, some people come to the paint nights already totally drunk and then they have more drinks and then they're like, what's happening? I can't paint. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go on to the next step here, okay? So we're going back to our center. So go ahead and rinse out your brush. And I'm gonna go back in here with yellow. And I'm gonna just make my center a little bit bigger. Good. I think that's good. We want kind of a nice big center. Not as big as if it was like a sunflower, but pretty big. Hey, Carmen from Virginia. Oh, yeah. Mason jars would be great. Heather, that's a great idea. <laughs> Thanks, Mason. Tell them I said hi back. All right, rinse your brush again, and now we're going in with some black. Now you could actually do this with any colors. So if you wanna accent with a different color, like maybe blue or something, I personally love, love, love contrast. If you don't know that about me, I love a lot of contrast. So as you can see right here, lots of contrast right here, all kind of blended right now. Neither looks bad, but personally I love the contrast. So you're gonna go in here with black and you're going to start kind of outlining, but really sloppily, some of these. You're not gonna go all the way around and you don't have to do all of them. Just try to not only stick to one side. And this is just gonna give us some of that contrast. So just kind of do them again at random and then come back and fill in any as needed. So remember, we're not doing a full outline. And on some of these, just do even just one side. Keep it really sloppy and don't overdo it. You can always add more of the black. You cannot take it away. And try to stick to mostly your front petals. But if you wanna do some a little bit on the black back ones, go ahead and do that as well. I know it's kind of hard to keep it random, but keep it random. And that just makes it pop and also separates your petals even more, okay? We are gonna do a little more work on the center as well, but that's next. Just in case anyone was wondering when that was coming. So really add, add as much or as little black as you want. Totally up to you. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Like I said, I like lots of contrast. So I tend to do quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I am not happy with these petals here. I'm gonna actually bring this one up to the front. Oh, look at that. There we go. All right, don't forget, just always step back and kind of take a look at it from a distance and you can see if you need to do more or less. Totally up to you. No right or wrong way here. Well, I guess it's just no wrong way. They're all right. Now, if you feel like you're like, oh, I overdid it a little bit, 
feel free to go ahead and rinse out your brush and add a little more color, okay? Totally allowed. So like here, I'm not too happy with this black line. I'm gonna go and throw just a little more red in there. Just tone it down just a little. Okay, I think I'll leave it at that. I think I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mason. <laughs> if anyone is enjoying this painting tutorial, please feel free to super chat, super sticker, or PayPal donate. The PayPal link is in the description. It's always much appreciated. And also don't forget to thumbs up. Okay, for those painting along, please let me know in the chat box where you're at. Veronica, if you want, you can definitely do the full outline. Totally up to you. I just recommend keeping it as sloppy as possible. Thanks, Spicy. You're in Texas? I think the Dallas name gave it away. <laughs> I was supposed to have a class in Texas last month, but I had to reschedule it, so but I'll be there soon. One second, I'm gonna grab a paper towel. All right, so for those painting along, please let me know in the chat box where you stand if you are at this stage or if you need a little more time, okay? Because if you don't say anything, I just keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and actually, I wanna add a little bit of white accents as well. Let's lighten up some parts of this. I really, I love going back and forth and making this as kind of like sh striped as possible. Like I said, I like the contrast. Aw, thank you, Kelly. Impressionistic, okay. Make it as impressionistic as possible. That is good. <laughs> and Hannah, I got you. You need one more minute, no problem. And take a step back. Okay. I'm walking away. <laughs> All right. Veronica, how are you doing? Heather, how are you doing? Natasha, how are you doing? Done? Okay, good. Anyone else painting along? Hopefully I didn't miss anyone. Hey, Susan. <laughs> Veronica says it's a mess. That's okay. Is it a pretty mess? We just have a couple more steps. So we're actually almost done with this one. We're wrapping up. Perfect example of what not to do, but the colors are amazing. I love it. Oh yeah, Jazzy. Okay, good. I knew I was missing someone. All right, so I'm gonna real quick just show you guys the last two steps. You can take your time at them. So I know Hannah may be still catching up, that's okay. So with your medium flat brush, we're gonna go here and we're gonna outline the center. Once again, it's all about contrast and keep it impressionistic. That's my new word. So you're not going for a perfect circle at all, just the idea of a circle. Don't get an oval, ideally. And then we're going to, if you guys remember the stippling concept, so shove your, your brush down so that the bristles are separated. And we're going to stipple some black, not on the whole thing, 
but just a little bit around the edges, a little bit towards the center there. Or really as much as you want, totally up to you. Okay, I think that's good. Hey Genevieve, thank you. And then the last thing, I like to take a color it could really be any color. I like blue. And then I like to just go a little bit around the center here, just kind of doing some lines. Once again, impressionistic. And that just adds a little more interest as well. It's okay if your other colors are all wet. No worries. Once again, do as much or as little of that as you want. Actually should have done this step before the black. So I'm gonna go back and fix up my black on that center there. There we go. Okay, and that is it for our colorful rainbow spring flower. How, let me know how you guys did. Don't forget to sign your painting. <laughs> Judy said she can do sloppy. Yep, just lines out of the center. Sloppy, sloppy lines. Let me go ahead and uh, bring you in a little closer. Here we go. I think I need to add a little, I'm gonna add just a little more black over here. Sometimes when I step back and look at it through the camera, I'm like, oh, that part's a little messed up. <laughs> okay, I think that's good. Continue to work on it until you're happy. Just because we're done with the lesson doesn't mean you have to stop painting. <laughs> oh man, there's a delay. There's a major delay here. Yep, they're always going to come out totally different. So there's like literally no way to duplicate the exact colors and shapes of the petals. <laughs> because this is uh, meant to be done as sloppy as possible or as impressionistic as possible. Oh, sorry, Prophetess Fry, you missed it, but it's okay. You can follow along later. All right, so how did you guys enjoy this one? Let me know. And then for anyone who tuned in a bit later, ta-da, uh, what we're going to try next week and this is, I'm hoping you guys can get the materials together, but just work with what you have. We're going to do a vase, okay? And um, so for this project, I use just a glass vase from the dollar store and then enamel paint, glass paint. And then on here, there's just, um, let's see, I usually use blue, yellow, green, gold, black, and white. But you can do it with just green, yellow, black, and white if you don't have all the colors. And also, if you don't have a vase, feel free to improvise. Use a mason jar or a glass bottle of any kind or a wine glass, anything like that. And if you don't have the enamel paint, then just use regular paint and then you're just going to have to seal it, okay? Did I say canvas? Veronica, I don't get what your question is. <laughs> All right, well, anyways. Oh, improvise, use a canvas? You could, I guess. 
Sure, why not? No one can see you, we won't know. <laughs> but it will definitely come out different on a canvas. But absolutely, if you wanna do it on a canvas, go ahead. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you had a good time and I will see you next week. It will most likely be Tuesday, but just keep an eye on um, the Facebook page for the event and then also on the community tab. And I'll let you all know as soon as I can. And I'll see you guys later.